Welcome back to Bayona's RC World. In today's video, we got the Great Plains Ultra Sport 1000 and Top Flight Monaco. So we got a color scheme that we're gonna put together with cut yellow, white, and black. Let's go see how it turns out. So if you like content like this here on the channel, go ahead and click that like, subscribe to the channel, and click that notification bell, share the videos, comment, you are subscribed to the channel I surely appreciate you so without further ado let's get into the actual covering with top flight Monaco on the Great Plains Ultra Sport 1000 we got the Monocoats all right hopefully we got enough to do the uh, scheme that I'm planning on doing which is if you know anything about the Ultra Sports you know anything about the Ultra Sport 40 the Ultra Sport 60 uh, the typical cover scheme that is associated with the Ultra Sports series, then you basically just imagine yellow being the base and then the white stripes and then the black highlights. All right, so we're gonna go with that and hopefully everything turns out well and hopefully I have enough. And yeah, so we got the irons pretty much what we're going to be utilizing throughout the actual covering to include the heat gun majority of the aircraft the surface is sheeted besides the open bay areas in the wing so uh should be pretty straightforward uh, a lot of air bubble potential if you don't take your time all right or especially using monocoat over monocoat in this situation over a sheeted surface uh you just got to take your time or prick the monaco uh that's going to be underneath the under the layer underneath and then um good to go all right guys so first step is basically taking care of all your hard corners so uh, as you can see right here i went ahead and i applied a corner piece all right it's pretty much bridging the fuse and the horizontal stabilizer i'm going to do that to the other side as well and then you can also start doing all your ends for example like the um, corners here all right you can start doing all that as well all these hard parts right there to include also maybe even uh doing your training edges it's if you want or you can utilize once you cap the corners here you can just have the excess bend over all right and kind of go into a 90 right there so it's really up to you how you want to do that but uh first things first like i said getting all the corners and so we got that going on we're going to also take care of this top piece right here on that side as well and yeah and then from there we will start covering the main portion of the fuselage so we will start covering the bottom section so since i'm gonna have this bottom section here in white pretty much from this portion of the fuse kind of coming up like that and straight back everything below that is going to be white therefore i can also start covering the uh, wing fillet area first all right so what i'll do is i'll cut a clean piece of monaco white in color to fit within this area here of the fillet and then I will cover the fillet separately and then for the main piece I can go ahead and pop on and edge it right at the uh, overlap here all right or you can try to do a one piece depending on how gradual or how steep that uh, the curve is you know uh, is trying to get it basically trying to get the monaco to conform to the curve going down and also the swoop all right so um yeah it's gonna be a lot of manipulation uh sometimes it's hard sometimes it's not it really all depends all right uh so to eliminate that i would go ahead and cover the fillet first and then we can cover the remaining areas and then so we'll start from the bottom up so we got a strip a monaco basically cut and fit it right here all right 
to go ahead and cover this piece and this just makes it a lot easier for when it's time to cover the main portion of your stab or the side of the fuselage you, um, you won't have any bare well, wood showing at any joint or corner right by doing this uh, just makes it a, look cleaner you know a lot neater and stuff like that alright now I'm not saying that you cannot just go ahead and cover the aircraft and have the excess just blend in you know you could do that as well but um, just been doing it like this for years should I say decades so alright so I'm just gonna use my little uh, trim sealing tool just using this so we can get really get down in there uh, because your typical iron can't fit in some of these corners all right so these sealing tools really do help a, a great bit you know uh, when it comes to tight corners or small areas like this so they got two different ends for this particular iron you know so uh, i tend to like using uh this one in particular let me see all right and then there's another one where it looks similar to that but it's instead of it curving up it's just straight all right so if you were just going to use this iron right here uh it's going to be very difficult to get really in there i mean you could do it but to really hone in and get that monocle really you know uh, adhering and touching in the corners more precisely a little harder with this uh, uh, thicker iron all right so uh, this real small trim sealing tool really does the job for a lot of the tight areas all right and so from here it's the same thing working from the center out uh, trying to uh, not put any bubbles within the um, covering All right. as you can see how I got that down now right here in the corner how that is nice and tight right in there going up and then now we're going to work on this top piece all right so as you can see how i got a little bit of overlap you don't really need that much this is more like a quarter inch overlap and it's not i didn't intentionally do it that way i just didn't want to be short in the material going over so you can actually come back and and trim that all right as long as you got at least an eighth of an inch uh down here or uh, overlap is great you know um quarter inch overlap is just overkill and most of the time since it's further along what's going to happen is that you're going to end up seeing this edge more uh be vi more visible than if it was just a, a, a one eighth of an inch out all right so uh, this in this case right here we're in the bottom of the aircraft so it's um hardly visible because uh, everybody's looking mainly at the aircraft from uh, top view down uh, and if you're doing the flyby and everything very rare your eye is really going to capture and get a hold of uh, this joint during flight so the only way you're going to see that is if uh, the plane is propped up right or upside down while it's stationary like, like let's say for example you're putting the wing on or something and somebody comes around and looks at your covering job you know but other than that, that's about it. Alright, so just doing that. And it'd be great to kind of bring this completely over. That way we can see the actual covering. Alright, let me go ahead and bring you guys out so we can actually get over here and see what we're doing. Alright, so 
all right guys so we got the wing fillet here we're going to start on the bottom just like everything else we do uh when it comes to mono coating and um always like to work from the bottom up and by doing it in this pattern in this fashion it causes the um, monocoat edges to always face down all right so we're just gonna go ahead and I already uh, cut out a piece of monocoat right about here and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna situate it right on this bottom piece of this fillet like so just like that and we will get with the ironing all right so let's go see if you can make sure you guys can see that all right so we're gonna start from this big piece in the center and we are just going to slowly work our way towards the tip and I think maybe the big iron can fit in here because this one has a sock and just makes it a lot smoother transition or not transition but uh prevents any scratches and stuff especially the fillet area we don't want scratches on there Just like that. Making sure our covering is really stuck down. So from here, we will just trim this like so. All right, and then we can bend that downwards. Now, sometimes this curvature here, we're going to actually have to make little cuts like this just so that the covering can actually conform to this area. All right. And so, Really 
seal that monocle down. Just like that. I probably could have sanded that off. Which I probably will come back there. Do that. We're going to go ahead and cover this portion of the um, wing fillet. All right. Now there's other ways you can go ahead and take care of this. You could do it in smaller strips. You could do it all at one time. Um, doing it all at one time with the side of the fuse might be a little difficult compared to the um, doing it individually like little strips and stuff. Um, there's nothing out there that says you cannot do this in three separate pieces, four separate pieces, all separate pieces, you know. You could do it all at one time if you want. Uh, it is your model. You do how you will. All right. Now, as far as it being uh, the easiest way to attack this will be in multiple uh, segments. Uh, so, you can basically do, like, for example... I'll do the back end here like such up to about here and cut that off and then we'll go ahead and join those segments and stuff you can do it that way as far as the seams are concerned from a distance you're not gonna see the seams but from close up you can see where uh, the seam is uh, located all right I'm a little bit more gutsy but not too gutsy where I'm gonna waste a lot of time all right so in other words I'm not trying to do this all at one time as far as getting the whole side of the fuse in one sheet to include the um, wing fillet which I probably could do it when you go well, from about here to here but coming down over here might be a little tricky all right so we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna go ahead and show you doing it this way. All right. First thing we're gonna do is, for me, I feel more comfortable getting the edges. You can start from the center and then work your way out, coming towards the front, or going from the edge going up into the fuse, or from the fuse going out. All right. So. It's really all going to depend on you and how you feel comfortable doing it. For me, I'll just go ahead and I'll just tack right here at this edge. That's what I will do. And then from there, I will do like a, like a sweeping motion going inwards, little by little. Just like so. I'm not saying this is... Uh, the best way to do it but for me it yields uh, pretty good results so I'm just gonna go like that making sure I'm pushing that monocle down making sure it's in contact with the wing fillet working my way outwards and up into the wing or to the uh, side of the fuse all right so just like that as you can see how it's working out already it's going up and out all right so I'm working my way towards that tip and eventually we'll start working towards the front and keeping the monocoat relaxed at this stage right here just working that to the front all right so we're just keeping it relaxed we're not we're not pulling tight or anything like that all right so I'll go ahead and uh, continue on Cause, all right 
we're gonna work our, our way out towards this edge right here all right and I'm gonna go ahead and work it from here get that monaco stuck down and then roll going up towards the tip all right using the tip of the ceiling iron to really get that monaco down onto the structure all right I'm trying not to uh, make any creases in the wood which is going to be the hard part there like that for that piece and then we'll work our way forward keeping the monocoat relaxed So there's other ways to do this and this is just how I feel comfortable doing it I don't know if my arm is in the way right now so it's probably blocking you see how all that is working out right now right so we're getting that that fillet pretty much getting it done that's all that matters all right well, let's go see if i can bring you over here maybe so it's not blocking Hopefully you can see that. And from here, being the fact that we're going to be cutting this eventually, I'm just going to go ahead and relieve some cuts here, do some relief cuts. Alright. It's just to, uh, just to help relax the monocoat even more. trying not to uh, stick all that down on there so we're not we don't really need everything stuck down now you can use your um, ceiling iron like this trim tool would be the best to use I just don't want to use it right now because the wing fillet area, uh, I don't want to put any indentations uh, where it's really going to show. So I'll just use the regular seating iron. Just taking my time.
just like that. Side here a little bit more relaxed as well. Maybe right here too. And one more, maybe right here. And I'm just gonna pull that up just a little just to get it out of the way so it doesn't I don't adhere it to the model just yet. trim this and when you trim just make sure you don't cut into your wood alright use a fresh blade if possible that way you don't uh, you can use the lightest pressure to cut down myself my tape if I can find where I put it all right and I want to make myself a little guide by starting at the end here 
and looking where I want to cut this thing at and just basically go And now I'm going to use a brand new single edge razor blade to basically cut that outline there. Very lightly. We're just cutting just the monaco. Alright. Uh, let's go see if I can put you guys over here better. Not too sure if you can see. Alright, just like that. Just like that. Alright, so we're gonna start from here, go that way because it's just more natural for me. So very lightly I am just scoring the monocoat. I'm not I'm not piercing down into the wood. Just the top layer of monocoat. So you see when it's all said and done. Uh, it's it's still stuck to each other but it's just like a little um, score cut and then the monocle will rip out All Just like that. And as you can see, where we got our cut at, it's just like that. All right, and so from here, we're gonna go ahead and also make our cut here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna utilize my hand, my finger as a guide. I'm gonna find my depth, how thick I want this come out this way, ride my finger, my thumb, at the edge of the wing fillet. Alright, and what this is going to do is allow me to gauge my cut all the way to the end here. Alright. got this little overhang here which we'll eventually cut and iron underneath this lip all right and let me go ahead and flip this around all this just to make it comfortable and at the same time try to get it on camera which is well, it's a pain in the rear So what we're going to do now is just get the monaco all those edges and seal it together.
and if you did make indentations on your balsa that's not the end of the world what you can do is also add water to your balsa in that section where you got a dent and the soaked balsa will eventually rise up you also put some heat on top of that uh, it will also assist in lifting that balsa that the indentation bring it back up Again, just trying to make it comfortable for myself, yet so you can see it in the camera. All right, so right here, we're gonna go ahead and make a few slits, just so that it makes it easier for the monaco to uh, conform to this area. So trim that to make it even nicer of an edge if you really wanted it. Take care of this front piece, and that will use the um, I don't know if you can see that. We'll use the sealing iron, the trim tool here, to go ahead and work this piece right here. Mm-hmm. 
Let's go ahead and take care of this portion. Once again, I'm not cutting into the wood. It's just the monocoat. As you can see how hard it is to still pull it off. All the other little things here eventually when we put the um, the other piece of monocoat over this and join them together all this would be hidden eventually Pretty much takes care of the wing fillet on both left and right so we got our left wing fillet here and then we got our right hand side right there and then now from here we can go ahead and start covering the bottom of the fuselage with white and we'll end it up at the edge lip here same with the front and we'll probably go about this much and once we're done with the bottom we'll cut out the sides to give it that that look that we're looking for all right just to cap that section all right we're going to give it just a little bit above therefore the yellow can come down and overlap the edge of that white all right go do this number just bring that monocoat around that curve and then seal it. The main thing is trying to ensure we don't get no air bubbles brought back in and all that stuff. Alright, so just like that. Getting rid of the air bubbles. Making sure we don't bring any air bubbles in there. So, how I trim this 
is I pull the monocoat until I pull the monocoat and kind of lift it off of the wood and then visually just look down and see that straight line that is producing like that all right as long as you got that you can go ahead and fold it on itself like so add a little crease to it you don't have to do that but for me it just gives me a, a visual all right so now we got a little crease just like so or if you don't care for that crease that's fine then I just take my blade I put my hand all right, I put my hand my thumb and as a gauge I just go straight down one continuous motion just like that So, one continuous motion straight down, get a nice cut, have a little overlap there. Alright, so just like that, went ahead and I sealed that whole edges, the whole edges, the whole edge. <laughs> so it's pretty much the cut line right there. And if you look straight, straight down, it's pretty straight for freehand. But like I said, that's no big deal. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and uh, do the same thing to this side. Once again, we're just going to go ahead and kind of lift up the covering just to get it a little straight, like so. And then we will fold it in on itself just to give me an idea. I mean, if you're using your finger as a guide, it's not really going to make a difference. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the camera down here. And hopefully I can get this at one shot as well. I'll go this way. Alright, put my finger, this finger right here. I'll rest it onto the model and then we'll just go ahead and cut straight down. cut straight down freehand all right you don't need a trim cutting tool or anything like that uh, just use your finger just place your finger and just grab the blade again all right just hold the blade place your finger on there use your thumb and middle finger holding the blade as a gauge and then just guide straight down just like that all right and so uh i still went ahead and continued covering now before the phone had died uh basically it was the side here that we had to um do and so what i did was i made a template out of some cardboard as you can see right here so i made this template here that way I can go ahead and cut the white monocoat just like so. Alright. And then I uh, went ahead and ironed it on. Yeah, it's just straightforward, simple. Uh, so we got that going on. Um, as you remember, we got the fillet 
here in the bottom uh, covered and so now as you can see what happens is when you add the color you can actually butt up the color onto that fillet therefore you don't have any exposed wood in the deep crevice in the corners and all that other stuff all right so it's nice and and uniform and nice and colored all the way through all right um, same thing with the um, the inside the training edge area so just like in this part right there I will take some of the scrap and pretty much iron it on like that uh, and then once that's ironed on then I'll seal it around and then when I put the actual main monaco all I have to do is make a slit and bend that over all right and so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and take care of this one all right let's get started the top part here of the horizontal stabilizer all right as far as this section here all right guys you can actually come in and actually cover this first all right you can you can do a little cap and you just cover that kind of giving a little bit onto the vertical stab and at the same time the horizontal um or excuse me the vertical fin and the horizontal stab all right so you can actually put a piece of monocle right there bridging both and covering that center piece in my case here i'm gonna go ahead and just do it all at once this whole piece right here all the way forward all right it's a little harder that way but uh that's just the way i want to do it all right and so from here what i'm gonna do is just as you can see i put a little um, strip of monaco at the corner that is just there so that you can butt up your covering and you won't see any exposed wood uh, at that joint all right so just make sure you know you got your surface all cleaned off and tacked off and everything like that now this is not a how-to monaco video uh, if you want to see that, uh, you can check out some of the actual how-to Monaco or use Monaco videos here on the channel. This one today, we are just just covering, and I'm just taking you along on what I'm doing. All right. See if I can pull you guys out a little bit there. That way you can see. And what I'm doing is I'm just tacking these corners. So from here, we're just going to start kind of right in the middle and work your way out. All right, just pushing the monocle down. Try not to develop any, uh, any air bubbles. I don't know why, but my sock is actually causing some scratches there.
So just by doing those small circular motion, working from the center out, you're pushing all that air bubbles out and basically uh, trying not to capture any air bubbles or create any bubbles underneath the covering. All right. So what I'm doing is I'm concentrating, I'm pushing that monaco down little by little moving the iron towards the outer perimeter all right just like that I don't know if you can see it pretty well. This is exactly what we're doing here. Alright, so as you can see, we got the Monaco completely down here. And we got this portion from here to center back is still um, need to be tacked down and pretty much ironed out. Alright, and so we're gonna have to switch you guys to this side. Hopefully you can see better. All right, and then from here, I'm gonna continue working. And you need to be able to see what you're doing as well. I'm not lefty, so. I'm not a left-handed guy. I have to go this way so I can come up around like this. There you go. Again, we're just just basically pushing all that air out towards the back side. All right. So as you can see right here, we got some we got potential area where it can have bubbles if you were just to tap this straight down. All right. So kind of get ahead of that. Start pushing using your iron and start. It's almost like you're using a squeegee, but you're using the actual uh, iron itself to push the air out towards the ends. All right? You do it this way here, you will be able to go ahead and uh, and cover without any air bubbles. Now, if you slip and you you just kind of rush it all right that's where you're going to end up developing some bubbles some uh, air in between the covering and it's going to look kind of nasty all right all right so as you can see just wanted to point it out I don't know all right. all right you see all that no air bubbles whatsoever here all right so just take your time take in i don't know if you could see this right here you see this section here all right so if you actually put this iron right on top of that you're gonna trap you're gonna seal the monaco down trapping this piece of uh, the air that's underneath all right so um what you do is use my thumb as an example as the iron so you'll put the tip of the iron right about here and then you'll push keep putting pressure ironing this bubble out 
pushing all the bubbles and the air out towards the opening all right so while you're doing that also kind of kind of pull the monocoat just a tad bit all right that way you, you don't crinkle the monocoat and accidentally iron in a wrinkle all right so we're going to continue on go ahead and do this right here Continuing on, pushing Alright, I don't know how well it's picking up on the camera But if you can see the bubble there Just get yourself a fresh or a nice um, needle, something like that a T-pin is a little thick, uh, too thick as far as the tip is concerned, so you end up making big holes, all right? So I, I would get a uh, a real nice thin needle, all right, to go ahead and do that. That way you don't have to have big holes poked in your monocoat. So far so good, you know, it's not the end of the world if you have a bubble in there, guys, alright, there's still ways to take care of bubbles, see, we got a bubble right here, I don't know if you can see that, and the more I keep going over with heat, the more the bubble is going to keep developing, so get your T-pin, or your, not your T-pin, but uh, a nice pin, you know, poke a few holes on there, come back with an iron, and voila, it's gone. All right. So we're just doing that. Just doing that. the ends here you can just pretty much keep pressure and push down and you'll be okay all right now the thing is too is this the balsa that comes with this kit is very soft so you got to be very mindful any little hard pressure and you know, all stuff where you on a wrong, wrong angle you could kind of dent the uh, balsa all right so just be mindful of that as well. All right. And so from here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and trim this piece right here. We're going to cut this straight back. And this right here, I will bend down this way. All right. And just kind of iron that and seal it towards the training edge. We already did the uh, from the bottom up, right? So we already get the, the main, the bottom flange of that monocoat to cover that training edge. And so from there, we're just gonna go ahead and, and just finish it off by coming down like this and then sealing this top piece of the monocoat with the bottom.
we got that pretty much out of the way we can go ahead and trim that or trim it later i will do it later all right now we're going to talk about the corners all right you want to be able to get this thing all the way around and not wrinkle all right you can go ahead and check out my video on how to do compound curves and all that stuff on YouTube here on the channel but I'm gonna go ahead and do it again here alright so from here what I would do is I'll grab the end I'll pull it nice and tight all right add some heat while you're adding heat you're pulling and stretching that monaco all right so just like this just pull and stretch manipulating the monaco around that corner and trying not to develop any wrinkles while you're doing it all right all right as you can see how we got this the balsa here is very soft, so I'm trying not to create any balsa dents, but it's uh, it's really proven very difficult. <laughs> All right. to the side like this all right once again it's gonna be hard to see what I'm doing here but like I said guys um, you can check out the how to Monaco video on YouTube on my channel and how to uh, do compound curves and stuff all right because it's all there already as a matter of fact in more detail So what I'm just doing here is stretching and providing heat. I'm going a little bit beyond. Alright, so we have some room to go ahead and finish cutting the monaco once we get to a certain point. Alright. Also soft. I don't want to put too much pressure or go in the wrong angle because I will end up making a dent. Now there's ways to go ahead and remove that dent even after it's been covered. If you have a, a hypodermic needle uh, type syringe thing, you can kind of poke some water in there and use the heat. Sometimes doing that though you introduce air bubble But the main thing is uh, getting that balsa to rise back up tip here like I said and this tip right here at the edge All right so same thing uh, it's just pull and add heat and stretch all right so as you can see right here we got some wrinkles all right so we're just gonna take this and we're gonna pull it and we're gonna add the heat And while we're pulling it and adding heat hold it there for a little so it can uh, cool off a little and then also the adhesive will be able to tack and hold well 
the minute you start applying more heat eventually it loosens up that adhesive all right as you can see we're working our way around and so far so good all right i like to go a little bit beyond that way i can go ahead and cut this thing nice From the top view, you see it's pretty much round, no wrinkles at the, no creases, all right? So we can go ahead now and come around and actually cut this. And cutting this, I just use my blade, all right? And also I've been watching the Amber Heard Johnny Depp case. since it had started, but oh well, it is what it is. It's just crazy. All right, so just like that, Let's see how we cut that. I'm keeping this nice and close. nice and seal the edges all right just like that all right all right guys so hi I'm I do the side of the fuselage basically is I made a, a template out of this cardboard and this right here is pretty much I believe the, um, the, the other half of the template that I make so this right here would be the template portion for the white that you see in the fuselage All right so this is for the white and then I'll just go ahead and use the top part as the template for the yellow so we can add it to the white all right and so that way I don't have to um, recreate the curvature here at the front it's already there and it will match up you know perfectly with the white all right so uh, I went ahead and I popped this onto the Monaco all right um, and did that i also measured where the uh stab uh horizontal stabilizer will be located and so this is pretty much the location here and then i just kind of estimated the thickness well not really estimated i measured it but um on this particular drawing i just i just did that line there without even measuring or anything because i just it's a little smaller or thinner than the actual stab so it'll give me some leeway to go ahead and trim it to get a, a perfect fit all right and, and then from there um we so we got this portion right here which would be the bottom side of the fuse so this is where the fillet is located the white is down here because uh, this is going to be the right hand side of the fuselage all right and so the whole top section here i can either leave it like this but then i don't want to be messing around with a whole bunch of excess monaco so we'll go ahead and trim this off to a, a certain uh, location, basically an estimated line, because I want this whole monocle to go all the way past the center line of the top of the turtle deck area, all right? And so I want to go ahead and give that uh, enough material. Uh, that way I can go ahead and uh, use it to pull and uh, manipulate the, uh, the monocle when it's time to actually do the ironing. All right, so from here, I'm just going to go ahead and take my razor blade. I'm going to go ahead and start trimming up all these things. And then we're going to clean off the black marker uh, with some ammonia or some um, uh, Windex and stuff like that. Or, or alcohol, depending on whatever you got. 
you can even use thinner, uh, automotive thinner, and it will not ruin the mounting code at all whatsoever. All right. So this is a fully sheeted, you know, this is the rudder, all right? And so what you can do before you do the uh, start covering, you can go around the perimeter with a strip, a monocoat like so, and kind of cap off the surrounding areas to include like the top area right here, all right? So you can cap that off, iron it down, and then just blend it in, all right? That way, if you're not good at getting into the compound curves and, and, and rolling the monocoat around the curvatures and stuff like that, that would be your best bet. That way, all you have to do is just seal the edges and then trim it with your, your blade. Just trim around. Um, all right, but um, this one right here, I didn't do that. Uh, I only did the top piece right here. This is the only one that I actually capped. The rest uh, is just all one piece of Monaco. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is, I'm just gonna prop this on here. And since it's a fully sheeted piece, we don't really need to tack like a corner or what. You still can if you want. Uh, however, you're just gonna end up lifting it up later uh, to try to get air bubbles out and stuff if you develop any. 
right so for me i'm just gonna go right start right here right smack in the middle of the uh the part it's gonna go right here and work i'm putting pressure at the front portion of my iron kind of right smack in the middle moving the iron in a circle circular motion working all the way out all right i'm gonna do it this way as well circular motion just working the monocoat out see at the same time since i'm not tugging on it and everything the monocoat's relaxed all right and then from here we're just gonna start working now i can hold maybe the, a corner you know and, and just so the the monocle doesn't uh fold up on itself you know to, and cause a wrinkle all right so just working out from the middle out utilizing this portion of the iron or the whole thing but mainly concentrating right now um putting pressure here to push and to prevent any gaps underneath the covering that will potentially trap the air all right so i keep my iron constantly on the material while i'm also adding some pressure all right and this way the monaco doesn't have a chance to get some air trapped underneath all right so if you're kind of like just lollygagging like that and and you're not really putting pressure and you kind of lift up and here and there um, the air will get trapped in that bubble you know cause a bubble and then you end up sealing the opposite side causing that air to stay there all right and so hopefully that made some sort of sense all right so we're gonna just go like that and see so yeah, here I got some crud I got some crud oh my yeah it's okay I'm not worried about it. Alright, so I'm just going to go ahead and take care of this side. Working the monocoat out as well. Towards the outside. And this doesn't give any chance for air pockets to develop underneath. I'm not saying it's not going to happen. I'm just saying you got a better chance of not developing it. All right. But sometimes it happens. Uh, nobody's perfect. And see, like, that's, that's lifting because I got excess heat built up on there because I'm staying in that side for a while. So I'm going to finish this off just by doing that. And doing that all right it's so just working outwards and this is uh, real time so there's no no funny business here it's not time-lapse so you can see how fast it, it is to just basically Monaco uh, a small piece like this all right so from here what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull the corner let's go see if I can get you guys in frame here all right I'm gonna tug kind of pull that add some heat pull add some heat pull add some heat all right Try to get past center that way we can trim it off all right so i'm just gonna go like that just like so all right and so from here we're just gonna work work that monocle to go around the corner and seal on the opposite side so that's it just like that all right 
and then up here in the top we already capped that off so I'm just gonna seal that and now we're gonna go ahead and take your exacto blade or single edge razor blade we're just gonna go over here in the top just gonna cut it straight don't cut your fingers I'm telling myself that all right I'm gonna pull the Monaco just a tad bit towards the center all right and then we're just going to glide the blade towards and ride the side of the rudder just like so all right and then here just ride the side of the rudder all the way down just like that all right and pretty much you got that going on now you go ahead and just seal the rest down add in the heat get that monocoat really nice and sealed seal them edges See how you got pretty much a round surface there, and then from here, you gotta go ahead and seal the top piece there. Then we can go ahead and do this. All right, so this one's gonna have a torque rod down here, so I'm not too worried about this down here because that's gonna get cut out. And what I'm gonna use to cut these things out. It's just not your exacto blade or razor blade. I'm just going to use the soldering iron tip. You know, basically it melts the monaco, melts it pretty well. It's a clean cut technically. All right. So we're just rolling it over. I'm going to go a little bit past center on this one. Just like that. Pull some of this covering right back towards the center. Just a little. Not all the way. Kind of bend that just like so. You can take your blade and then just ride it along the leading edge. Just like that. Alright. And all that eventually is going to be. You're not going to see any of that because that's all going to be where the hinges are and you're going to, your control surface is going to be epoxy to the aircraft. So and from here, just seal that edge. All right. Well, there you go. We got pretty much our rudder surface monocoated and that will go directly like that all right all right guys so we got the starburst basically cut out that's my pattern the width the length and the spacing which will be manipulated during the time of application of the monaco white all right and we're going to also take care of that on the fin and rudder section there's going to be two uh, right there and probably do the bottom as well of the stab uh, then we're going to add some black to kind of highlight that make it look almost like a shadow effect and kind of almost mimicking the main fuselage and when we're done with that we'll go ahead and cut out uh, us 1000 for ultra sport 1000 on the cry cut uh, maybe with a different font
shadow effect. Per se. Alright. And so that's pretty much what we're doing and what we're going for. Just like that. Alright, so I am going over the white. I'm not actually putting it off of the white like this, like uh, which you can do. You can also do that. If you wanted to right in the middle I think that would also look pretty cool however you could also do it like this give it a little bit of yellow in between separation you can do that uh, there's a lot of different ways you can do this we just Gives it more of a an attractive look. Alright. So how I'm gonna do it on this one, or actually how I have been doing it, how I have been doing it is pretty much riding the edge of the white. Alright, so I'm just lining up the black with that edge of the white. And lining up the tip. That's as close as I can get it. Alright. And then putting it down. Just like so. Alright. So just like this. Alright. So that's how I'm actually going to be putting this on. And so from here, we're just going to take the uh, iron and start from the back. And I'm going to start pushing small circular motions. All right. Keeping that tip of the iron, once again, flat while I'm pushing down and in a circular motion, pushing all that air outwards <clears throat> all right and so we gotta go ahead and redo that all right now we're gonna get right into here pushing the air outwards circular motion moving only as fast as I can get that monaco adhesive down all right if you move too quick you're not going to really heat up that adhesive and what's going to happen is the monocoat you will end up sticking before it is the adhesive um starts to uh work and all you're doing is causing air bubbles to actually form and when you get to like the thin areas like up front here, you can't put the iron too long there because you'll end up melting that fine tip. Alright, so just like that. Alright, and then we're just gonna go ahead and bend this downwards, just like so. Then we'll go ahead and make the trimming. Alright, so what I'll do here is I'll put my ruler just like that and I'll just cut all right then I'll just remove the uh, control surface and iron this down all right just iron it down just like that come up around here in the back same thing here, I'll take my ruler, get my blade, and I'll line it up where I got that cut mark, just like so.
Keep them nice and tight. And then I'll go ahead and make my cut right there. Lift off the monaco. And go ahead and seal that down. Now, depending on how hot you got your iron, as you can see, I got some smudges. We're not too worried about these smudges because all that can get cleaned off very easily with thinner. All right, so I use automotive thinner and uh, that cleans that really well. It takes off all that excess residue off. All right, so then from there, we're also going to just iron and seal this in. All right, that's it. In a nutshell, go ahead and put everything back on, and then we can move on to the other uh, black accent that we're putting on here or trim Oops. too far that way there we go still too far Just like that. All right. Yeah. Drink water, guys. I go with my water bottles over there. I haven't even finished most of that. But anywho, so that's pretty much that in a nutshell. I'm gonna go ahead and take care of this side, and then we'll work on that, and we'll be considered done for the most part. I'm still debating if I'm gonna do the bottom. All right, of the uh, the fuse. If I'm gonna do this as well, I'm not too sure yet. If I want to do that, um, we'll all see. I'll probably do maybe uh, a checkerboard white in the bottom. Maybe I don't know. We'll see. All right, guys. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, iron this wing tip. All right. So I got my monaco basically tacked right here on this rib. And from here, we're just going to basically pull and stretch, all right? So what I'm doing is I'm just going to be working my way towards the front tip. Just basically pulling and stretching, just like so, all right? So we're just going to manipulate this material all the way until we get to the front. Or pretty much wherever we're trying to just go pull that up a little bit all right so we'll pull kind of hold it there for a little so that the adhesive can cool down and actually grab a hold of the uh, the wood all right because if you let it go too early it will end up popping back up on you all right so as you can see I'm just pulling just pulling as much as I can all the way around just like that all right and then we're gonna go from here to here, we're just going to continue pulling and just kind of bring that all the way around, just like that. All right, pull. See, while, while we stretch and we put the heat, it kind of gets those wrinkles or those folds and stuff. It'll, it'll kind of melt the plastic and, and kind of, you know, stretch it out where it'll be a little bit more pliable. And then you just hold it down and allow that adhesive to uh, cool. All right, so you can see right here, look at that wrinkle. Most people would just iron over that and it'll crease it. All right, it'll end up having a crease. So how we're gonna do that. 
all right let's go zoom in just a little bit more all right so what we're going to do is we're going to pull you see how we just pull that just like that kind of give it a little test what they'll do all right kind of pull that up and above all right and the more you pull you add the heat all right as you see how uh, it disappeared if i let it go whatever didn't stick will end up popping back up all right now you can see the wrinkles the hard edges now look at this gaggle right here probably wondering how we're going to do that all right so first thing we're going to do is once again pull pull the monaco while we're ironing it down we're also manipulating the monaco we're also kind of tugging and pulling in certain directions right to just ease the monaco in there to prevent any wrinkles all right so as you can see we got this right here where it's most people uh, especially beginners would kind of be scratching their head going wow how we do that look at that we got this big radius right here then we also got it going downwards right here how are we going to do that well first we just basically grab a hold once again find a spot and kind of see what the covering is doing all right as you can see right here this looks a lot it looks more relaxed so if i add heat there and lock that down imagine the next step the next step is to try to pull this side down right so if you pull that down what is it going to do all right you see how that thing wrinkles it folds most of the time you're going to add heat there by accident and you're going to cause that wrinkle to stay there all right so we're going to have to work it slowly all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to hold it right here I'm going to work this portion, stretching it, all right, now there's no set rule on exactly where you're going to start and finish up at, it's just pretty much on the fly, you, you look at what's going on and, and you make your judgment from there, not every time it's going to come, you know, uh, go as planned, all right, but after a few times of doing this, and getting more experience at it it'll become uh, almost second nature all right as you can see how we got that down already so we're going to go ahead and pull this right here i'm going to add heat right here and i'm going to lock this portion down on the front so that won't come back up again that way we can concentrate mainly on that corner corner radius all right so now that's locked down all right let me go ahead and finish this part right here since that's kind of lifting up I'm going to go ahead and pull the monaco. Just kind of bring that down just like that. Hold the monaco. Let it cool just a tad bit before you release it. If you release it, like I said, too early, it will end up popping up because of adhesive it didn't stick. Or adhesive is not cooled enough to, to grab a hold of the wood. Alright. So there you go. Doing that. Alright, so... Technically, I can go completely all the way around working it this way, all the way to the other side. All right. Oh, let me go ahead and uh, see if I get copyrighted on that. All right. So, we're going to go ahead and pull this right here. You see how that looks? It looks kind of like, oh my lord, what's going to happen there? Well, I'm going to pull it. Pull, manipulate, add heat. You see how that just disappears all right let it cool before you release go ahead and work this right here add some heat stretch and pull all right guys so we got the monaco pretty much <clears throat> where I wanted it to be and I'm going to go ahead and trim it right a little bit past center as a matter of fact right here is actual center so it's about I'll say about an eighth of an inch past center until you get close to the tip 
all right um so i got a brand new fresh blade brand new fresh blade i guess that's how you want to say it all right like, so what i'm gonna do is i put tape i'm gonna use that as my line my gauge and then I'm going to take my blade and I'm going to just cut just the monocoat. All right. Now, people, we all say cut just the monocoat. Don't cut into the wood. And especially if you're doing this on a horizontal stabilizer sheeting or a vertical fin uh, type deal. Um, you know, it's very crucial not to cut into your wood. Uh, because if you start scoring your sheeting and stuff like that, you just make that an area a weak point. All right, so that's the reason why I emphasize a fresh blade. All right, because a fresh blade doesn't take much to cut, just like that. Very light pressure, and it's already cutting into there. All right, as long as it even scores it, if it even scores the the monocle, it's able to rip properly. All right, now. No cameras in my way, so uh, I have to be at a certain angle for this. That way, I don't screw it up here on camera. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start here. I'm just gonna lightly follow along that masking. All right, and then with a st hopefully steady hand, I'm just gonna score the monocoque. until we get to the front all right and from there we can pretty much tear it off the covering all right as you can see it's still tight on there that's because The adhesive still being stuck on the wood and all I did was just score the monocle all right so I didn't cut it completely into the wood you have to ensure that part I can't stress enough now it's just a wing tip you see how it's still kind of lifting up there it's just a wing tip so I mean it's just a block of wood so it's not really a structural part uh, so I mean practice this on a wingtip, I guess, if you want. Uh, most of the time, everybody has a. I'm not say most of the time, everybody, but sorry guys, the way I talk. But uh, most of the time, people are having issues covering uh, the wingtip. All right, trying to get the wingtip nice without any wrinkles and all that stuff, and I just one thing about soft balsa you know so I just kind of made a little crease mark right there so what I'll do now since I made a little crease you'll take some water add some water to uh, this balsa portion and just sometimes just the water by itself will raise up um, and make that balsa that crush area or indentation rise up and stuff like that if it's having a hard time then you can still put water, take some heat, apply the heat on there, and I'll bring it back up.
So we went ahead and we got the white on the bottom pretty much ironed on. All right, as you see in the time lapse, uh, how I did this, I basically in the beginning I just all I did was tack, tack the corners, pulled it tight. This way we don't have to really shrink so much, right? So we pulled it tight and then we took care of the leading edge, locked all that down, and then on the trailing edge I was able to pull and make everything taut, right? Once we did all that, I concentrated on that uh, inner fairing, you know, uh, fillet here, right, which was a pain in the rear, but it is what it is. And then from there, um, we took the heat gun to basically drum tight the whole thing, all right? Eventually, you know, before the heat gun, I, I, I sealed all the end, ends and everything, the trailing edge as well uh, with that flap. All right, and then we shrinked it with the heat gun and then finally we took the iron and we were able to press the monocoat down into the wood and iron it down and preventing any type of air bubbles all right now the reason for the air bubbles is that if you were to go straight without doing the heat gun first and go straight down you will end up developing air bubbles all right, um, and since the bottom is still open, it's still considered an open bay at the moment, there's no real uh, reason for hot air to kind of build up in there and, and get trapped. So everything is still free flowing, so it's a little easier. Now when we get to doing the top of the, the wing, we're gonna be sealing everything. So hot gases will eventually be trapped inside these bays, and so, if you do not have any place for that hot air to release, you will never be able to get the monocoat to stay flat. All right. Therefore, what you're going to have to do before we do the actual ironing or even the heat gun is we're going to have to open up all the hinge points. All right. Since the hinge points, the slots go all the way through, that will be an access uh, area for all the hot air to dissipate and come out and prevent the monocoat from ballooning upwards. All right, so from here we're gonna go ahead and take care of the top of the wing with the yellow piece of monaco and, and you see the way we did this guys because this is a 74 inch wingspan and the monaco is only a six foot roll therefore uh was short you know there's a reason why we had to do the wing tips separate you know individually like this uh, is because the monaco wasn't long enough. I wouldn't have enough to grab pull and stretch if I were to use one whole sheet as you could see We didn't even get to the center portion of the wing. That's how short the monaco it is Because um, I only have one row of white one row of yellow and That's all I got so we have to make do what we got so the yellow that I'm gonna do here is gonna also be the same and then I got some yellow scrap that I can go ahead and put in the center and finish that off. Uh, so being the fact that this is in the center of the wing or the, the fuselage, you're not going to see that uh, when it's all together. It's no big deal. So I can actually cover that with black if I wanted to, or even white or blue or whatever. You're not going to see it unless I take the wing off. All right. But since we do have enough, I believe scrap yellow to go ahead and finish off this center piece, uh, we'll be okay. All right. So uh, next thing we're going to do is we're gonna do the top portion of the the wing um, wing tip before we do the actual uh, main portion of the wing all right guys so we're gonna go ahead and uh, use this piece right here to go ahead and finish off this wing tip all right so I'm gonna go ahead and grab a piece of tape to separate the uh, backing off of the monaco put it like that and then peel it off all right this is real time so you can actually see how easy this will be once you get used to this all right so there we go all right. I'm gonna line it up with this rib the last rib here or a cap strip 
right about here. I'm gonna go ahead and just iron this right here to keep it straight or on there. And I'm going to iron that and pull this right here. We're gonna iron this down, all right? That's just to keep this portion uh, affixed to the uh, aircraft, the wing. That way when we're pulling, uh, it doesn't move on you. All right. All right, so that's the first step. And then here we go, all right. I know there's, uh, there's many, many different methods on how to apply Monaco to the wingtips. And uh, you can use the heat gun and heat and pull and tug and and you know hold down and everything like that to me it just takes a little longer uh, and then you need a sometimes you're gonna need a hot glove because you if you're not really good at the heat gun you will end up burning your fingers at the same time all right so this here I'm just showing you that uh, you can do this with a sealing iron in no time. And you don't need anything special. get it out of there before you start ironing everything down and locking it in place and we're just going to go a little bit past center and because uh, we're going to trim it right here you can actually see where the actual the first monocle was laid at the edges right here all right so we're just going to go a little bit past that way we can trim that monocoat right there and it won't be that seam won't be that exposed to the side all right just like that all right so that's pretty much it as far as the wing tip is concerned and then from there we're going to do just like we did last time we're going to put tape there and we're just going to trim it all right guys all right guys so this is what I'm also going to be using for cutting out the Monaco. Alright, so we do actually have some areas after you cover that you need to open up. Uh, in this case, I got the uh, wheel well, or not the wheel well, but the actual landing gear block. The notch here for the landing gear wire, since I'm not using uh, what you call this, uh, retracts. Also, the opening for the wing bolts uh the bottom side and also the top side all right which i already had done so we're not going to be worried about that um as you can see right there i got the wing bolts done there all right so i'm going to show you how i cut that part out and i know i had done this already in many of my videos and so this one i'm not utilizing a uh, soldering iron tip i'm using my wood burning tool all right this one here is just a regular typical 30 watt um woodwork i mean a uh, wood burning tool i got this particular tip on there just to do the job it's real simple real easy all right so we're gonna go ahead and uh show you what we do here all right so let's see if i got enough cord here i have to bring you up closer 
on this side here. Sorry about that, guys. All right. And so, what we got going on, we're going to go ahead and open up this cavity right here. All right. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take one portion of my tool, plop it in there, and then slowly drag it towards the end. Just like so. Alright. And that's pretty much it. And then we can we could go back and actually clean that up with um an exacto blade or something like that. Let me go ahead and go further back here up to the end just to make sure we open that up. Alright, and then from there, like I said, we'll just clean that up with an exacto blade or uh, just leave it all right and we could also do that with like the aileron uh, servo opening and all that stuff but in that case I'm actually just gonna uh, cut this into an X and actually uh, flip that monocoat inwards and actually iron it in there uh, just a little bit more protection all right guys so I get a lot of people asking me how do I put on these sunburst or trimming monocoat over monocoat I already have a, a, a few videos I got one video I know for a fact on my channel that uh, shows many ways as a matter of, I think it was like four or five ways on how to do monocoat over monocoat with the um, dry method the coverall method uh, Windex method you know the wet method uh, there's so many ways all right all right all right let me go ahead and back you guys out all right so as you can see right here we got we got our actual monaco I'm gonna go ahead and place this at this mark that I had made it earlier and that is going to mimic or at least be close to the same if not the same as the opposite side all right it's gonna be just like that and we're just gonna go straight for it we're gonna iron that piece on as a matter of fact I'm gonna have to put you guys in the opposite side all right all right guys so what we're gonna do from here after we got this thing all measured out is I am going to secure this piece down onto my surface I'm going to tack this tip just a tip just like that just so it doesn't move on me all right from here we will start and first things first I'm going to apply pressure to Monaco right here and I'm not too worried about this part right here where the aileron you know not too worried about this area all right because this right here all i have to do is make a mark where that is at and i could put a scrap piece to cover up i'll show you later all right so what we're going to do is we're going to start right smack here and little by little we are just going to work our way out towards the tip just like that we're going to work slowly. Well, it looks like I'm going fast, but it's not. Just like that. And if you go very close, you're going to see that uh, even with that said, there's no bubble. All right. No bubble whatsoever. Now... I'm not saying I'm perfect, all right, guys. Uh, there'll be times where there is bubbles and stuff like that. But like I said, I am not one to really worry about it. If you are worried about it, then uh, if I was entering in a competition, there'll be a different story. I wouldn't just be doing it like this. All right. But what I'm doing at the same time, I'm, uh, I'm putting, uh, doing the iron in a circle circular motion 
is I'm utilizing the front piece right here of the iron to ensure it's fully engaged down onto the material and you're pushing constantly pushing it down you're not lifting at all because if you lift it up you're gonna capture some air all right so you wanna it's almost like using a squeegee and you're constantly putting pressure right you don't lift it up and then put back down because if you do it that way you're gonna develop air bubbles all right so constantly you keep your iron always <clears throat> always touching and with a, a good amount of pressure not enough pressure that you're gonna puncture a hole into your wing all right just enough where you're not lifting the iron all right so just like that and we're just gonna continue moving now I'm doing this over a sheeted surface so it's a little easier all right the minute we get into like open bay areas we're gonna have to do a different technique and that is basically puncturing the material or the covering underneath so that um, we allow some air to escape all right so we're just doing it like this This is uh, real time. All right, let me go ahead and bring you closer so you can see. All right, just like that. Let's go zoom in there. Constantly putting pressure, small circles. You, if you go straight back, if you just go like that, all right, you might have a chance of putting some uh, air bubbles in there. So just circular motion, working from center out, both ways, left and right. And I'm just gonna keep going and when you get to the core uh, the, the final the tip you can just basically do that all right and there you go that's pretty much how to apply that over a dry surface all right all right guys so this is pretty much how it looks all right there's no bubble per se all right now what you see in there, the little the way it looks, it's really just the mon the the wood structure underneath. All right, you see how it's like little divots and stuff like that. Uh, that because I didn't really, I guess I didn't really sand that this area really well, as you can see. All right, but there you go. Let's go see if you can see it. All right, you don't see um, like bubble bubbles. If you know what a bubble 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 is, all right. Now, from a distance and all, you know when it's flying and stuff, who's gonna see any of that, right? But yeah, that's pretty much it. And that's the uh, dry method. And I did. I went ahead and I just finished that up, as you can see. All right. All right. So we got one eight inch tape basically laid out exactly where the uh, sunburst this next one is going to be located at all right so what i did was i placed the sunburst in the general location or the actual location that i want this thing to be at and then i went ahead and applied the masking tape that you see right right at the edge all right so everything within the center of the two pieces of masking tape within these parallel lines is all going to get pricked or holes punched into the covering all right so this is just one other method uh, to utilize for a monocoat over monocoat you can go check out like I said check out my other videos I did I believe four or five different methods of how to um, apply monocoat over monocoat 
Uh, you can use uh, trim solvent. You can use uh, coverall is what I demonstrated on that video. Um, Windex. You could do the dry method. And um, what was the other method that I used? It was Windex, dry method, coverall, and there was one more. Can't remember on the top of my head, but anywho, I did show that. Oh, the and the uh, the hole pricking method, all right, which is what I'm going to be utilizing here, all right. And the only reason why I'm utilizing it here is because if you look down there I got no more Windex <laughs> all right so that's one of the main reasons why and I'm lazy right now to go to the store to go get some so I'm gonna utilize my other options all right now for me I get pretty much the same results no matter which direction I go with and that's just because I've been doing this for such a long time all right so the reason why I would do the uh, needle pricking method here is because we have a lot of open bay areas, all right? A lot of open bay areas. And the thing about that is when you're going over an open bay area, monocoat over monocoat, normally you develop a lot of bubbles only because you're softening or you're, you're, you're kind of melting that, that monocoat, right? You're heating it all back up. To include the base and so what happens is that you tend to get like dip kind of goes downwards and you end up catching some air bubbles in between the covering and so that's what causes most of that that air bubble that, that you see if you were just to go over monocle or monocle when you're going over like a sheeted surface like such on this side right here you can put a downward pressure throughout you know um minimizing or just eliminating air bubbles period all right so it, it's a little different story when you're when you're doing sheeting over sheet uh, i mean um, a monocle over monocle over a sheeted surface or a hard surface compared to open bay areas all right so i don't actually have a woodpecking tool or a woodpecker by top flight which is old school and uh they don't sell them anymore you probably could find them somewhere and there's probably different uh, uh tools out there that can probably replace that but i did this i i just put a whole bunch of t-pins on a piece of balsa and what you're gonna do here is just basically just roll it in there like that make a whole bunch of holes in the open bay area all right so just like that it really surely beats doing this one by one with uh, just a single needle I'll show you how fast that was all right same thing with a woodpecker it basically is a whole bunch of needles on a roller and you just roll it all right well in this case as you can see it's pretty much the same thing so i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna basically prick my monaco throughout the center piece that i got right here all taped off all right Big swings, jam to the back, put me in the ring, you'll go out in a bag. 
I sing what I mean and I bring it to the mad light Ain't got time to kill, I got time to fail I took a red pill, I know life's short So I wanna live real, but how is it supposed to feel? So pretty much that is all the little holes into the Monaco. If you can see, I got all the little holes pricked out, all in the open bay areas. All right, and so from here, we're just gonna go ahead and plop on our Monaco. We can actually remove at least one side of this tape. just so that we don't adhere the monocle over it. Just like so. All right. Get our covering. Get a piece of tape here so that we can separate the two pieces of covering, well, the uh, backing like so or you can use an exacto blade and stuff and and peel the backing off either way as long as you can get it off just like so all right and then from here we're just going to go ahead and lay the monaco onto the surface that we just pricked all right trying to get it as close as we can Especially lining up to where you really need Monaco to be. Alright. So it's going to go on just like that. And then we're going to grab the iron. And we're going to start ironing it on. Alright, so the iron is on. I have it at pretty much low temp. Alright, so it's um, the dial is actually right smack in the middle here. I don't know what setting that is at the moment. But it is not um it is not hot like like burning hot all right it's just enough to get the adhesive rolling the adhesive melting on the monaco therefore it can actually adhere all right if you have your heat too high in this stage monocoat over monaco especially in an open bay area you will develop bubbles just like that all right the minute you touch it it's going to you're gonna start seeing little little bubbles all over the place. All right, so keep your settings at this stage um, on the low setting. All right, it's to the point where it should be warm to the touch. You can pretty much leave your your hand on the actual iron. All right, it's just enough to get that adhesive tacking onto each other, and then just keep rolling over. All right in circular motions same thing just trying to do everything as possible to just eliminate or not produce any air bubbles all right like i said high heat in this position this portion of the covering will cause a whole bunch of bubbles just keep all right guys so we're going to go ahead and start on the actual monocoating Monaco here all right so we got the Monaco laid on and what I like to do and this is just me personally since I have a long section that I'm going to be covering um, I like to start kind of like in the center in one of the cap strips like this right here you know the solid pieces uh, I'll start kind of like right here this way it locks in um, this portion of the monaco that way when i go either direction this section will not move or shift all right because i don't know if you ever tried starting on one end and we preferably start on the big side going towards the small side and the minute you start ironing down you tend to uh, manipulate the, the monocode if you're not careful and it'll shift slightly 
And if I uh, shift slightly in this monocoat, I'm gonna expose all those little pinpricks that I had just done, all right? And it's gonna look really off if my monocoat is shifted to the side and I got all these holes exposed, all right? So what I like to do is to prevent that from happening, all right? I got this down just like so. I'm gonna go ahead and start right smack here in the center piece, right on top of this cap strip. What I'm just gonna do is, I'm gonna do just exactly what I would do when I start monocoating. All right, small circular motions from one side to the other. Just like that so this is now completely sealed down so I won't have to worry about this shifting on me all right so I can start on this side and we're gonna go from here that way all right I'm keeping this here just in case just to ensure that I have some sort of visible representation of the area that needs to be the, the cover needs to be on all right so i'm just massaging the covering i'm also kind of pulling it pulling it straight that way kind of keeping it taut all right all right and so from here i'm going to start very small and work the monaco I'm going to be working it, little circular motions from the outside, I mean the inside out. Alright, this right here you just got to take your time guys. This is no, there's no rush in this portion of the covering. Unless you just don't care, then that's up to you, all right? Now, there'll be times where you will see some of those pinholes through the covering, provided that um, at this stage, because the... Uh, the heat is not so high that it's gonna melt and seal those holes after it's done. All right, so right now I'm not too worried about those little little holes that you're seeing right now, if you are seeing it. The main thing is just making sure I don't have any bubbles there's a difference between um, bubble and the whole, the little indentations that you're seeing right now through the monocoque. All right. So small little circles keeping the tip of the iron constantly engaged. All right, I'm not lifting up the iron at any given time at this point until I'm done, all right? So just like that, keeping the monocle going straight to where I want it. There's a cap strip right here. So I'm also being mindful of that. That's my hard surface. So I'm going to right up on there just like so. And it's like we're starting from the beginning again, all right? So I'm, I'm keeping it almost like it's in stages. Right above that cap strip, just like so. So from here to here is pretty much done for now. And once we continue on and get this whole sunburst applied and it's actually adhered to each other like so, 
we will come back on a higher setting on a higher setting and run over this whole thing once again all right and that will completely close up all those little indentations you see all right
I'm so stressed out Everything just feels like a test That I feel so depressed when I can't seem to get out But something deep inside won't let me Alright guys, this has been such a long video, I'm sorry it's this long, but unfortunately um, it is what it is. Uh, I, I did not want to uh, uh, extend the video to another series, another part I mean, uh, so we just wanted to keep everything all condensed into this one final covering video for the Ultrasport 1000. Alright, so um, thank you again for sticking around and looking forward to getting the aircraft up in the air. So from here on out, all that is left is installing the engine, the fuel tank, the electronics, servos, battery, and get the aircraft CG'd and um, get the engine started. Check everything all out, and then head on out to the flying field for its maiden day. So until then, I will see you on the next video which more than likely will be the maiden flight so thanks again for sticking around here at Bayonis RC World and looking forward to posting more content for you guys you guys have a good one shishoo